One of the benefits of digital capture is that it's now easier than ever to take and to make photographs. One of the downsides is that many times we capture too many images. We need some tools which allow us to kind of handle and organize our files because otherwise they can get lost on a hard drive. Well, here I want to look at one such tool which allows us to create and design a contact sheet. Now, in the previous version of Photoshop and Bridge, you could go to the output module. There you could design a contact sheet, export that to a PDF format. Yet in the new version of Photoshop and Bridge, there's a contact sheet which allows us to create this contact sheet layout which will automatically open up in Photoshop. Let's take a look at how we can do this. Well, first we want to select some images, and we'll do that in the Adobe Bridge. Here, I'm going to click on this folder, Bridge, and then I want to select all of these pictures. On a Mac, press Command-A. On Windows, press Control-A. Next, navigate to the Tools pull-down menu. Go to Photoshop, and here with the tools, you'll notice there's a new tool, Contact Sheet 2. Let's click on that. This will open up the Contact Sheet dialog, and also show us the Photoshop interface in the background because it's the Photoshop engine which will build this contact sheet. Well, here you can see we're using these 11 files. We can specify width and height, color mode, bit depth, color profile. Then there's this little checkbox. You can either choose to flatten all the layers, or if you want to edit the layers after the fact, you can turn this off. Let's turn that off because I want to highlight a feature in regards to working with layers which can be helpful for modifying multiple layers. So again, we'll turn that option off for demo purposes. We can also determine how many columns or rows we prefer. And if we want to use the file name as a caption, we can choose a font or font type or size. All right, well, let's leave all these settings as is and click OK. Once you click OK, Photoshop will create a new document and begin to create this layout. In the Layers panel, you can see it's populating that panel with the different images and also text files which are describing the images, the file names. Once this is complete, what we can do is we can customize things. For example, if I go to my Layers panel, I can turn off the visibility of certain layers and you can see how those layers are now not shown in this document. Another thing that you can do is make changes after the fact. And this can be really helpful. For example, one of the new features in the Layers panel allows you to filter or just show certain layer types. Well, if we click on the T key, it will then just show us the text layers in this document. There they are. Well, here I'll go ahead and click on one, scroll down, hold down the Shift key and click on another. Next, I could change the opacity or the font or the color. I'll just decrease the opacity so you can see that that now shows up in a much more muted way. It's now light gray rather than black. So again, we can make changes to our contact sheet after the fact. In regards to the layer filtering, we'll talk more about that later. But for now, when you want to turn off the filtering, we'll just click the icon again, and now it shows us all of the layers. Another way that you can create this same contact sheet is from right inside of Photoshop. To do that, you'll navigate to the File pull-down menu. Then in the File pull-down menu, what you want to do is go all the way down to Automate, there, underneath Automate, you'll see you have the option for Contact Sheet 2. When you click that option, it will reopen this dialog. Now, you could either use the files that you already selected in Bridge, or you can manually select those files and then create the Contact Sheet. It's the same process as we did before. I just want to highlight that you can initiate or start this process either from Photoshop or Adobe Bridge. Bridge CS5 and Bridge CS6 are pretty much the same. And while there aren't any new revolutionary features that are worth highlighting inside of Bridge CS6, that isn't true when it comes to MiniBridge. And here I want to focus in on how we can work with MiniBridge. Many times what we'll do is we'll work with Bridge, MiniBridge, and Photoshop together. And I want to talk about that process here. Well, here I'm obviously inside of Bridge. I've selected this folder, O2-Bridge, and I've targeted or clicked on this image, Jared-08. Well, one of the things that you can do is you can work with Bridge 
and then jump to Photoshop, and then you can view these images inside of MiniBridge. Let's take a look at how we can do that. Here inside of Bridge, if you click on this boomerang icon, it will then take you to Photoshop. Inside of Photoshop, if we have MiniBridge open, you'll notice that it took me to this particular image. If MiniBridge isn't open, we'll just click the tab, and you can do that either to close or double click again to open up MiniBridge. What's great about this is that if this is the photograph that I want to work on, I want to open it in Photoshop, we'll just double click the file and it will open that up inside of Photoshop. In other words, MiniBridge allows us to work with our files in a similar way to Bridge. The advantage of this is that it now kind of functions like a film strip. If the thumbnails are too big, if they're taking up too much screen real estate, we'll just hover over this dividing line you can go ahead and click and drag to make this smaller. Well, now that these are small, I can't really determine if this is a good image. This is just too small. Well, a great shortcut which allows you to view your images in MiniBridge in full screen is the spacebar key. Press spacebar, and now I'm in full screen mode. Use your arrow keys, right or left, and you can move through your images in order to find a photograph that you want to work on. In order to exit this view, just press spacebar again, and it will revert back to the previous view. You can also navigate to your images in some pretty creative ways. First, let's take a look at how we can jump back to bridge. To do that, you can click on this bridge icon here, right below the mini bridge tab, and that will then take us back to bridge. Here we could choose a new image, then we could go back by clicking on the boomerang icon. So again, you can see how you can really go back and forth between these two tools. Another way that you can navigate is you can click on these arrows. Here it shows me I'm in my exercise files folder. Click on that arrow and a contextual menu will open up. And here I could select a different folder, say layers, and then I can see the files inside of that folder. To remove this filtering or this location, you can double click these dots here and it will remove those and then you could click on a particular folder as I'm doing here. If you click on this, we have some view options. These allow us to go to that slideshow or review mode. We can also show our images in different ways and include information along with those thumbnails. Next, we can choose how we sort these images, whether that's by file name or size or rating, etc. Another thing that you can do is you can right click or control click over an image. When you do that, you'll see a contextual menu, which gives you some similar controls. You can choose a different view mode, navigate to the Adobe Bridge, or you can choose some Photoshop functions as well, or determine how you want to open up a picture. So again, you have a lot of different options when it comes to working with MiniBridge. Now the trick, of course, is that while this is great, while you have that film strip below, sometimes it can take away from space that you desperately need in order to view your photograph. For example, here with this picture, I'll go ahead and press Command Plus on a Mac or Control Plus on Windows to zoom in. Well, now I can't see the whole image because MiniBridge is covering a large part of Photoshop. In order to minimize or to hide MiniBridge, you already know how to do this. You simply double click the tab name. And this is true with any panel in Photoshop. So here I'll go ahead and do that in order to minimize that space. And so now I can see more of my photograph.